Assalamu alaikum. Greetings and welcome to the Munir Muhammad Show. Brothers and sisters, I'm your host, Jamil Muhammad, and we are streaming live. And if you'd like to participate in today's conversation, you can give us a call at 773 434 6625. Brothers and sisters, we have a very exciting show for you today. But before I introduce our guest, I'd like to remind you, as always, to please follow us on our social media platforms which include Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and go to our YouTube page, click the like and the subscribe buttons so you can be notified whenever we post a show. Brothers and sisters, I'm very excited about our guest today because we're going to be talking about a very timely and needed subject today. And I am pleased to be joined by my friends and brothers, brother Marcus and sister Cecilia Muhammad of the Marriage Keepers. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. I'm so happy to have you all on. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm very excited about our discussion. Thank you. Thank you very thank much you. for oh. us being on your show. Uh, before we uh, delve a little deeper, I want you to uh, introduce yourselves and tell our viewing audience just a little bit about the marriage keepers and uh, what it, the services that you all provide. Okay. See? Well, uh, thank you again. And I just want to open up in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is indeed his messenger and servant to us all. And I like to greet your audience in the greeting words of peace of Asalaamu Alaikum. I am Sister Cecilia, and this. I'm Brother Marcus. And we are registered Muslims in the nation of Islam. Uh, I have been registered uh, this year, August, will be 30 years for myself, honey. I've been registered for 31 years. 30. And we just celebrated July 4th, our 30th wedding anniversary. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and we have six children, uh, four boys and two girls. They range in age from 29 to 18 years old. Yes. And the Marriage Keepers is about helping married couples and singles to get to gain the necessary tools for our couples so that they can have successful, healthy, long-lasting marriages. Because what we find is that there are principles that we have been taught. And once we begin to implement, practice on a daily those principles, right. we will have successful marriage and relationships. And the key word is practice. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you say practice is a continuous process, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Continuous. And you have to be encouraged to continue practicing because if you don't get encouraged, you will stop practicing and you'll just have a, a, a relationship where you're not improving at all, but in fact, you're degenerating in the marriage. And we don't want you to degenerate. We want you to keep on improving and practicing what you have been taught. Yeah. And so just now, so you all offer services for singles who may be looking uh, to get married and you offer services to uh, married couples to show them how to sustain and grow and have a healthy message or to stay married. <laughs> yes. And we do a lot of services for singles uh the services we call them the single success weekends the honorable lewis farrakhan has told us that we need to do services for the single brothers and sisters in the nation of islam there are a lot of singles so we come in by a lot of permission to the mosque and we do a two-day thing with the singles we're getting ready to try to set this up soon uh, for the singles, mm -hmm. but we our specialty is marriage because right. that is what Allah has blessed us with mm -hmm. uh, to no husbands. We have a wives only husbands, uh, wives only class, and a husbands only class that is second to none. It's phenomenal. It speaks to the needs of married couples, and it's 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 the first I've seen in a nation. A husband's only class, a wife's only class, that's unique in itself. That's what we have at the marriage retreat every single year. 
And you spoke of the marriage retreat, and I understand that the 12th annual one is coming up in St. Louis. You want to talk yes. a little bit about that? Yes. The same. Would you talk about yes, it? Yes. This year we will, uh, God willing, in August the 25th through the 28th, we will be in St. Louis, Missouri, with our beautiful brother minister there, Brother Donald Muhammad, yes. and the wonderful believers there. Uh, this, again, is our 12th annual marriage retreats. We normally move the marriage retreats all around the country. Uh, of course, due to the pandemic with COVID, we were virtual. So this year, inshallah, we will be face to face. And for those who may not can come in person, they can also come through hybrid on a Zoom presentation. So this year will be the first time we do both at the same time because time dictates an adjustment right, right. Yes, right. <laughs> and it is again it is starts on that thursday so couples are asked to come in uh the day before which would be at the 24th the thursday which it, whatever date the wednesday is on the oh the 24th yeah yeah the 24th yeah. the wednesday to come in on the wednesday and then we get started Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then everyone normally leaves either Sunday evening or early Monday. And it started that way because originally the marriage retreat started the first, I think, four years. We had Friday, uh, it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and the couples themselves said, we want this to be longer. And that's how it became where it started with people coming in on Wednesday because they said they wanted more days. They didn't just want three days. They wanted more. So we thank Allah that every year it is a success. We have our regional ministers from all over the country that will be participating. We will have our national assistant to the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, our beautiful brother, Brother Ishmael Muhammad, who virtually has done a wonderful, wonderful job with the couples and again, it's, it's just a phenomenal experience. Uh, most people think, well, I don't have any problems. I don't need to come to a retreat. Well, I give this example to people. You go get your car tuned up when your car is not, if your car is working fine, but you get a tune up, you get a diagnostic, you make sure your, your everything is working in your car. So why not do the same thing for your marriage baby let's go get a tune-up let's get freshened up let's get the spirit of marriage with other couples coming from all over yes. the country a tune-up is necessary for everyone we have couples who are from two weeks married all the way up to 50 years plus and everyone comes by god's grace every year because it's just a phenomenal experience yes sister brother and how do you all is there a registration process um for the event yes Yes, you can register uh, for our marriage retreat uh, by going to our website. It's www.themarriagekeepers with an S dot com. www.themarriagekeepers with an S dot com. Or you can call us at 770-256-8856. 770-256-8856. And that's how you register you'll see our whole agenda is on there, as well as testimonials mm -hmm. from people who have been to the marriage tree in the past, mm -hmm. and they uh, gave a testimony of what we actually did for their marriage. We have had people who came to the marriage tree, and a lot of the brothers were drugged there by their wives. <laughs> <laughs> and the Brothers told us that we, you know, we didn't know that this is what you all actually did. There is no fronting of anybody going to happen at this year's marriage retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the brothers have said to us that uh, this was like Savior's Day for our marriage. That's what they told us because the spirit that we are communicating to you is the same spirit that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has given to us. We try the best to give you peace. The idea in marriage is peace. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, what is above the peace of a husband and a wife? And so 
that is what we do. We don't front anybody. We don't challenge you on the spot. Ain't nobody talking about your marriage. You, this is not going to be no process like that. The only people who are going to be discussing your marriage are going to be you and your wife, you and your husband. That's it. We are not interested in putting nobody on blast. Let, let me ask you, uh, in order to receive a message, sometimes you have to be prepared for it. So for someone out in our viewing audience who's interested, you know, just talk about the kind of mindset, you know, uh, you have to have or how you should prepare to go to the retreat is, uh, you know, are there any uh, uh, predisclosed conversations you need to have at the house before you go? I mean, what are the ground rules? <laughs> Well, we definitely, definitely say come with an open mind, come with an open spirit, because again, we're all in a room together receiving tips and tools to help us. And the most important part, I would say, is the assessment. We go to jobs every day and we're in meetings and they want to look at the numbers and what is the performance and how are we doing and what's where the opportunities at well your marriage needs the same thing you need to look at how we how are we communicating how are we spiritually how are we emotionally Our how facts. are we fit? and so we help couples to break down every level over that days and look at every aspect well baby we're doing great here but this is our opportunity so when we go back home our brother our western regional representative yes brother abdul malik saeed said this to the couples he said if you don't have goals for your marriage you make each other a goal and so this inspires and invigorates couples and they come every year because they say normally you come to a retreat people say and you don't want to go back because you're like it's going to be repetitious it's going to be at, at, if, when people go on our website and hear the testimonials of couples who come eight years, seven years, yes. nine years, and they say the same thing every year, I learn something new Different. and they're like, I'm going to take this and work on it and apply it. And they come back and they're like, man, we hear again, testimonials on how this works and how we do this. And we have brother, uh, brother Dawood and his wife who, who does credit and helping believers to help their do, do their credit and they come back and they're purchasing homes to hear the success of a, of a week, a couple of days that can take you the whole year of giving you really instructions and information to help your personal relationship, which is what it's all about. And then we do have Sister Melissa Muhammad. Oh, yes. And she does an excellent job on your money personality. Yes. Oh my God. And we have Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad, who is going to be with us. I think that that Friday, inshallah, we're going to have him. And he does this absolutely fabulous program on communication in marriage, which most of us have. We got a little bit of a communication problem, right. but he does this in a way that it just makes you look again at your wife, at your husband, and consider who am I really talking to? What is going on in the marriage that I need to be paying attention to? That is what he does so well. And we have Brother Minister uh, from St. Louis. Uh, he is going to be doing the Koopa for us on that Friday. And he is going to do an outstanding job. It's all for you if you choose to take advantage of what Allah has blessed us to be able to do. Brother and sister, you all sound so encouraging, and I'm encouraged by the smiles in which you said it. <laughs> you know, you're saying this, you know, because those conversations can be challenging. Because you yes. said, you know, brothers say, you know, you look at somebody and say, who am I talking to? That could happen right now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, but you know, you want to see the positive things in it, and so talk about um, when you get here, because I'm sure there's some apprehension, a little nervousness, and things like that. But as you said, this is about communication, growth, and kind of rediscovering what brought you all together in the first place. Yeah, I think that um, mm -hmm. people have said 
that they laughed harder at the marriage retreat than they have probably left in their whole marriage because we have learned something from the minister. He has a way of putting you at total ease when you are in his presence. And we have learned how to do that. We are getting to the point where we're becoming pretty good at it. And we want to let you know that you need, need not fear anything. There is nothing going to be said that's going to make you upset, angry. Nobody leaves out the marriage retreat with their fist balled up. You ain't got to fight nobody. You ain't got to be on post nowhere. Come to the marriage retreat and see what is going on in your marriage. That's what we have to give you. Um, we don't have no way of forcing you. We're just inviting you to take advantage of a service that the nation has needed for a long time. We had Brother Akbar, the international representative of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And Brother Akbar came to our fourth annual marriage retreat. Mm -hmm. And you Thank know you. what? He said, he said that we need this marriage retreat in every mosque in every study group, every masjid, every church, we need it because we are connected with something about marriage that a lot of couples need to hear and be turned on to. So we we just want you to see what we do. Right. We yeah yeah he said he has never seen nothing like what we do at the marriage retreat. And his 53 years at that time of being in the nation of Islam, he said that to us. So we invite you to come and see what the fuss is all about. Yes, sir. All praise is due to Allah. Uh, brother and sister, do you find that many couples um, are kind of like on autopilot? You know, it's just they're functioning, you know, but um, whether it's the lack of communication or whatever, but they're going you know through the motions doing things but there's really not a lot of energy in there talk about some of the things that you've observed or obstacles and challenges that um, sometime can arise in a marriage we call that that we like to call that stage zombie stage where we are always we are automatic pilot like you just said we know their issues We've argued about it, we fussed about it, but we sweep it under the rug and we sweep it under the rug. And it gets to the point where the rug now is so high that you can't even walk over the rug anymore. We have to deal with it. And see, that's the part that we tell couples, why wait to, example, we get car insurance to just in case we get in a car accident, then we can use the insurance to pay for the issue, right? Well, we tell couples, why wait till you get to that point? Start implementing basic tools from the onset. If you know you're dealing with that, okay, this means that we gotta be totally honest. This means that we need to communicate in a way where we're not criticizing, condemning, or complaining, but we're coming with solutions to the issue. I can sit here and say all day, you, 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 you did this and you did that. I could do that all day. But the, uh, what we're showing couples is come with the mindset of, baby, honey, how can we solve this issue? We got a financial issue. We have a communication issue. We have a conflict issue. We got an issue with these grown children in our house and we can't get them out. We need help. You see, it's dealing with everything, but it's giving you advanced relationship That's skills so that when we come across the problem, oh man, I, oh yeah, we <coughs> talked about this. This is on page 25 and they get a 50 page book that they, they are able to take home and keep working on throughout the year so that you can see, baby, when we was at the marriage retreat, this was what we said we were gonna do. So have we started working on it and have, how was our progress? Cause we tell couples after you leave the retreat, take an assessment in, in, in three months, how, how are we doing? Then take another assessment, well, how are we doing? By the time you're able to come back to the next retreat, you have did behaviors that's giving your relationship peace and watch this contentment and 
happiness because I'm actively working on, first of all, myself. Right. It's intentional. We tell couples all the time, we the marriage retreat is doing this for you. It's right. intentionally giving you action to help your marriage in whatever state it is. If you're happy, it'll make you happier. If you're dealing with issues, you'll be able to help deal with those issues better. If you're newlyweds and you don't have any issues, you are getting PhD learning on the onset of your new relationship now. So I don't have to, we don't have to go through the phase of, of where we tell people by God's grace, 30 years of struggling in marriage, we've learned a lot of stuff to help you. Mm -hmm. But if you can get the tools that we have learned at 30 years and you start them at the beginning of your marriage, two months, six months, a year, how much more successful will we have healthier, happy marriages? Because now, like the minister said, what? The Honorable Lewis Farrakhan said, perfect practice makes perfect. So if you're learning what to do and how to do it, then now you are you are being catapulted to be even more successful than the couples who had to learn through tragedy and bumps and accidents. Right. You know what, that was well said, sister. And I, I love the point you made about being actionable because it takes work and effort. You know, you're not going here just getting a book and it's automatically supposed to happen. You know, no. as we know, as being Muslim followers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we have, this is a work program with anything. And so, you know, when I'm listening to you, and you talk about, we know um, the times that we're living in. We understand the decadence and filth that's all around us, the distractions. We're living in a time of fall of America. America's falling. Yes. And so the distractions in how mainstream society defines marriage now and tells us what it's supposed to look like as opposed to what we've been instructed and taught how challenging is it to redirect couples to focus more on what we should be doing instead of what our open enemy is telling me telling us and putting on whether it's radio, television, and all these other things. Well, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has given us a roadmap to marriage. And we thank Allah for him and his example of marriage. He's been married for 68 years. That's a long, long time to be married. And he has been able to guide the nation of Islam through whatever we've gone through, I thank him for his example. And we use what he has taught us to be successful. Uh, I can tell you that we have uh, a lot of problems that come up in marriage, but we have to have guidance as well to help people through what they're faced. We have some situations that we can give guidance to uh, in marriage by the fact that me and Cecilia have been, been married successfully for 30 years. We have guidance for you and we have things that you should consider uh, in marriage. When we do what we're going to do on that Thursday with you, oh my God, it's going to be something brand new that you probably never experienced before and it will allow you to assess properly your marriage. So say it. And it's, it's so important. And that's why we also tell people that the, the different things that's going on around us, how do you fortify your marriage mm -hmm. with all that's going around? Because again, that's why it has to be a God-centered relationship, a God centered marriage because if it's not you will be swallowed up by satan and that's what we see happening we're being swallowed up we have a way our bible our quran our religious books is our guidance but if i'm looking at reality tv if i'm listening to the music if i'm doing everything that is outside of what i say i believe 
then, then those same problems are going to escalate and escalate. But we have to be grounded with God at the center. And when people ask us, well, what has helped y'all? God at the center, praying, fasting, doing everything. Because like the minister told us, he said, we are not sufficient for each other. That's you must have God in your relationship or you will soon tire of each other. And that's what we see happening. I'm going to the divorce court because the Negro in me is tired of the Negro in you. <laughs> All praises due to Allah. I want to encourage those in our viewing audience, brothers and sisters, to call. It's okay to call with a question, a statement, or something because if you don't call, I'm going to have to ask all the questions and then I know how you're going to look at me because, brother, look, let, let me ask you <laughs> this, brother and sister. You know, one of the things that, that we talked about that you mentioned is that this is a something for self-awareness first and foremost. How yes. to be a better husband, how to be a better wife or look at what you are doing currently and how can you improve on that. Now, what do you say to the couple that's been married 20, 30, 40 years? Because remember who we were in our 20s. We're certainly not that same person in our 40s or 50s or 60s, and we grow at different rates. And so talk about how to be fluid and grow together and be respectful of those things. Well, I can tell you that the the woman that she was at 19, 20, and 25, 30 years old is not the woman she is at 45 and 50 years old. She's changing. A lot of times we change in the marriage, but we forget to tell our partner that we change. If you, as a man, are not attentive to your wife, she will have changed and you will totally you will have totally missed it we don't want you to miss it we want to help you in our husband's only class to be attuned to the changes that she is going through you have to be a change you have to be attuned to the changes he is going through as well and i can tell you that the main thing that you have to realize is that you must be growing in your marriage. The minister said self-improvement is the basis for community development. If you think for a minute that you can be the same old person that you were when you started out in your marriage, I am sorry. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. You have to continue to grow and the nature of the time that we're living in if you're not growing you're dead See. and a lot of our marriages are not growing because we have stopped growing in the marriage we stopped growing the marriage so the marriage is stale and and like she said it, you you don't have anything to look forward to you don't talk about anything we're going to present you with many things that you could be talking about at your dinner table every night. We're going to help you to really see that the minister told us that your spouse is growing. You have to grow with them. And in, in your spouse, your other spouse, he, your spouse is growing, so you have to grow with him. We yeah. have to be attuned to each other and each other's needs in the relationship. Well said. I want to uh, take a caller before we go to break. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead with your question or comment. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Jamil, and greetings to my sister and brother, your guest. Well, I'm, really enjoying, I'm really enjoying the, uh, the, the program today. It's very much needed. This is Hamid Sharif, brother, calling from Maryland. And I just want to commend your guests on the business that they have because marriage is very much needed in this day and time and to teach how to stay married and love one another. My wife and I, we've been married for, well, this year, New Year's Eve, we'll be married 67 years. So I thank Allah for that. That's all praises due to Allah. Thank you. 
and I'm extra proud because that's my uncle and aunt. <laughs> you know, we're doing that. Well, brothers and sisters, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to come back on the other side with more interesting conversation. We'll be right back. Muhammad Show, a production of Crow. Please take time to join us at Crow, the Coalition for the Remembrance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Crow is the National Archive of the Nation of Islam and houses one of the largest collections of historical audio, video, and print documentation on the total black experience. Crow is located at 2435 West 71st Street, the corner of 71st and Crow Lane. We are open seven days a week, nine to five. Our number, 773-925-1600. We look forward to seeing you at Crow. Sister Sajda Muhammad, we are proud to announce that the Sajda House commemorative Elijah coins are finally here. As we renovate and restore the former home of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, we have recycled the old copper gutters and downspouts and created a one ounce 39 millimeter coin made of 100% pure copper. Each coin is professionally graded and has its own barcode and registration number. This priceless heirloom, made from recycled copper from the messenger's home, is now available at SajdaHouse.com. Um, brothers and sisters, we are back continuing our conversation with Brother Marcus and Sister Cecilia. But first, we're going to go straight to the phone line. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead with your question or comment. Assalamu alaikum, family. Wa alaikum salam. This is Sister Karima and Brother Anthony out of Atlanta from Magnolia Crescent. Yes, ma'am. So much, Sister. Wa alaikum salam, big brother. Uh, we could not let this time go by and not call and share our experiences with sister with brother marcus and sister cecilia for their marriage retreat their marriage keeper marriage retreat we absolutely love them we love them so much um they're powerful we learn a lot about building healthy god-centered marriages um they have something like that they do over their retreat where it's like women's only and men's only and i think sometimes we take for granted that when we get married, we're always going to be able to easily find couples who um, are working towards uh, staying married and having happy, healthy relationships. Um, and so having the women's only and the men's only allows us to ask questions and to share experiences with 
others who um, have or you know have success in their marriages and they just want to share how they're able to accomplish that, or if you feel like you're you've kind of reached somewhat of a stumbling block and you're not sure how to move forward to be around other women who love Allah, who um, love being married, to share their wisdom with you is invaluable. And I think creating those types of um, events and activities uh, to, to promote that is few and far in, in between. So we look forward to the Marriage Keepers Marriage Retreat because it's the only place that we, you know, have found out about that promotes God-centered marriages the way they do. Not to mention um, a lot of the tools that they use. They have a student minister, Malik, who comes in from California, and he takes us through these um, marriage diagnostics. And it's, it's just a great check and balance for us married couples that we can kind of look through, look to throughout the year to see if we're progressing the way we should spiritually. Um, you know, are we making our prayers? Are we studying? Are we, you know, giving in, in zakat? Are we doing the things that we should be doing individually and collectively? Because all of those things contribute to the happiness and the health of our marriage. So that's just a few things um, that we've taken away. There's so much more, but I know time doesn't permit. So I thank you for allowing me these uh, brief moments. Thank you, Sister Karima. And um Thank you to uh, brother, both you and Brother Anthony uh, for everything that you all do and um, especially Praise services uh, that you all provide down at Magnolia Orchards uh, Farm. Thank you so much, Big Brother. Thank you for okay. always uh, honoring us by having us on your show. Yes, ma'am. Brother uh, Marcus and Sister Cecilia, Sister Karima said a lot there, brother. <laughs> yes, and, and look, we had to get Sister Karima and Brother Anthony to come to the marriage retreat mm -hmm. because they have this wonderful non-alcoholic beverage that we want to yes. taste test, and they're going to be at this year's marriage retreat, and we're going to hopefully have some of that wonderful, sparkling, non-alcoholic liquor that they got on oh, beverage. Beverage, beverage. Like up, brother? <laughs> They have non-alcoholic wines and teas, brother. Yes. <laughs> non-alcoholic. Right. Keyword, non-alcoholic. <laughs> hey, hey, brother, you know, we were talking off camera, but, you know, also children come into play. <laughs> you know, and we love our children, but, you know, we love them differently. And so there comes a time when um, they grow up and they leave a the house and then you're there with your spouse. Or, you know, you have one or two that linger behind, that kind of thing. And so talk about the roles and the tools, those conversations. And these are very real conversations that we all go through. And that's why I bring that up. <laughs> yes. Well, this it, is it's definitely, we look at it as rediscovery. And it's rediscovery because we, we've been together, we've reared our children, we're older now. And it's like, okay, guess what? We ain't got to worry about nobody else but us, you know. And, and we, 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 we only have our 18-year-old by Allah's grace in the house with us. And he's working. He's very busy. So he has his own life going on. And it's just like, I, I, it's to the point I should be like, where y'all going to be this weekend? Where y'all yeah. doing this? Week? Because, again, we are, ha we are having a good time because we, we've always been friends with one another by Allah's grace. So we, we having a ball. We travel like today. We're coming to you from Chicago. I mean, not Chicago, from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, Brother Marcus uh, travels for our uh, Southern Regional Representative, Brother Abdul Sharif Muhammad, around the Southern Region. So, by Allah's grace, he spoke there today. We're here with you right now. And then once we leave here, by God's grace, we're going to do a luxury picnic on a farm. So, it's just like, you know, we, we're having a ball. We're having a good time. And this is what we're telling couples about. Live life to the fullest because we don't know when it's our time and we see what's going on right now. So we don't have time to bicker and fight. We need to be building, creating, and just re reinventing ourselves over and over. And you won't have a dull marriage because the more you fall in love with you and who you are, the more your relationship is enriched, the more excitement you have in your relationship because you are doing it individually self-developing and as a couple, you have goals and aspirations to accomplish. So empty nesting is fun for us. <laughs> well, all praise is due to a lot. Tell me about the uh, communication piece. And I say this 
brother and sister respectfully, you know, as black men, many times, you know, you're taught to provide, you know, work hard, provide for your family, this and that. And it's about the growth and resources that you provide. And sometimes you neglect some of the more intimate conversations and moments. And what, even though you're working to provide to the other person, they may receive it differently. And that's a different part of communication. And so there's so many things in there. And when you talk about rediscovery, you have to address those things that have built up that you said are swept under the rug. And I want to make sure we talk about the, um, the need and necessity in order to participate and get the most out of this, of being open, of being vulnerable, of transparent with yourself. That self-accusing spirit comes into play in order for this uh, to really be successful. Well, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has said to us that there is no relationship without communication. We must work on the way we communicate. Uh, I can tell you that I've, I've grown a great deal uh, because of this teaching, because of the way that it has been communicated to me. And I've learned that you have to, as a man, know that the woman that you have in your life is a talker. She loves to talk. Brother. And you, you have to love to listen when she's talking to you because the way God has made her is different from the way he's made you. You might be the strong, solid type as a man, but the woman is not going to be the strong, solid woman. She is going to be her natural self. And when you free her to be her natural self, she is going to communicate with you all the time. Me and my wife, we talk at least 20 times a day. When we wake up in the morning, we talk. And when we go to bed, that we talk. And we talk all during the day. We talk because I understand that that is filling a need inside of my wife for her and me to communicate, to be together. And I, I, I've i learned when we communicate now, let, let's demonstrate this to you. This is how we talk. We look at each other. We turn the TV off, or at least on pause, and we talk to each other. And I, I'm listening to her, and she's talking to me, and she's nodding her head, and I'm nodding my head, we got agreement because you can't do nothing unless you agree. Too many of our relationships are combative where it's always an argument. You have to stop arguing. Arguing drives the spirit of Almighty God out of the relationship. You got to stop arguing. Where can we agree? That is the basis of unity in a marriage. The agreement and we can talk about anything and everything you have to turn your conference table your 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 dining room table into a conference table it's a table but you have to call it let's go to the conference table honey so we can talk about this and you don't have to yell it doesn't have to be ugly it does not every conversation does not need to be rolling your eyes and let me tell you what I said. The head got to be moving. You ain't got to talk like that because you're talking to somebody that you love. 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 When you love somebody, you don't communicate with them like you're talking to a street person. You're talking to somebody who you love. And so, you got to remember that when you're talking with your wife. You got to remember that when you're talking with your husband. We have to be above all of that street crap that we have learned. We have to be civil in our discourse with each other. It does not have to be ugly. We can disagree, but we do not have to become disagreeable. That's what I'd like to say in that. Brother, that was 
That was so beautiful. Uh, I have to say, I'm gonna leave it at that. We're gonna go to a caller right now. <laughs> caller, you on the line? Go ahead with your question or comment. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam, brother. Brother, this brother and sister are a wonderful, dynamic couple. You know, I I learned a lot from them on the radio show um, a couple weeks ago um, on Landine's show when I asked about the uh, importance of a wedding ring. Uh, the, the brother explained it to me, uh, and the sister explained it so tremendously well. Uh, but when I asked about uh, the relationships, uh, the extended family relationship, particularly mother-in-law, that was really explained to me um, magnanimously. And, and it made me, I didn't have no issues with my mother-in-law. Everything is uh, uh, really cool. But um, I know that it's been the butt of jokes about mother-in-law and son-in-law and, and woman thinking that no woman is good enough for her son and, and maybe the man, the father think no man is good enough for his daughter. But um, can you expound that again just a little bit? And also extended um, other extended familiar relationships and uh, friends. Thank you, sir, and thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Brother Emmanuel. Very good. I, I didn't hardly hear him, but he, I didn't hear what he was saying. He, oh, Brother, he said, first of all, he learned so much when you were on Elevated Talk Radio with Brother Mandeem Muhammad and co-hosted by Brother Emmanuel Omar. But he was speaking about, he said he learned a lot about the significance of the wedding ring, the way you explained it on the show. And he talked about mother-in-law, the roles of the mother-in-law and uh, father-in-law and he wanted you to expound on the in-laws and extended family, um, the, kind of, the meaning and significance of those. Crazy to a lot. That's a beautiful thing. No, but really, we want to hear, uh, you can start with the mother-in-law, brother and sister. He said- Well, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely when we, we have to say, like I said, we got married at 19 years old. So, and we got married on July 4th. So we were in, we said we're declaring our independence from our parents. <laughs> and, you know, you're 19 years old and you're like, you know, you cocky and, you know, you got your arrogance, you got your little swagger going on, you know. And we learned over time that, like my husband said, when, we did, when he decided to marry me, my mother said, well, we're going to have a family meeting. And in my dining room, we're both originally from Brooklyn, New York. And we met in high school in Brooklyn, New York at Paul Robeson High School. And so my mom was like, okay, we're gonna have a family meeting. And he walks into this dining room and it's like three generations in there. I mean, my grandmother, my cousins, the second, third, all these people in here and they're drilling him. And he said to them, the same God that blessed you is gonna bless us too. And left it like that. And over it, my mother, because my mother, it was the type of mother where if it wasn't her way, it was unacceptable. And so it took us some time to adjust. It took them some time to adjust because they both are similar people, uh, very much same behaviors, <laughs> you know, like, like like people, you know. And he, because he was always respectful and he would listen. And even though we may say, quote unquote, I know what don't tell be always respectful because like the Quran teaches us the ties of relationship. This person came from this environment. This is what produced your husband. This is what produced your wife. Do not curse the root in which they came from. Learn about the root. How it's going to benefit you as a husband, as a wife. Because the closer you get to the family as a husband, as a wife, you begin to understand your spouse deeper. And when you get to understand them deeper, then now you can handle them in a certain way. Now you can say, oh yeah, he favored, you watching his uncle Leroy over there and he favored uncle Leroy in some behaviors that he got, or she loves her grandma and you see how she's learned a lot of things from her grandmother, her disposition, the way she do, because don't disrespect it, especially when we're coming into new knowledge. We want to disrespect everything and cut it all off. No, grow closer to it. Be an example. 
We attract people by being an example of humility, by being an example of being striving to do right and be right, be honest and telling the truth and, and being respectful. You will win anyone over by listening to them, accepting what they have to say. And that key word we learned, don't invalidate anyone's experience or feelings, but take it as this. People are going to show you two things, what to do or what not to do, but you can learn from everyone. All praise is due to Allah. It was well said. This is, you know, you... You all have shared a lot of information, uh, which is very valuable, um, especially today because uh, marriage, you don't hear the same conversations with some of our young people about the institution of marriage, uh, understanding the value and the benefits of it. And part of that might be the example that's been set and what they've been told as well. But uh, what would you say to a young person, let's say 35 30 and under now, just about the institution of marriage, who's probably thinking like, ah, oh, no, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> well, I think the question is. What, what did you say again? Repeat what it? would you say to a young person, let's say 30 and under, who's interested, who really, um, about the value of the institution of marriage, because so many of our young people have been taught that it's not important. What would you say to them about the value of the institution of marriage? Well, I can tell you that you might think that way, but marriage is very important to you. And when we show the 30 year old, the 35 year old, how marriage, when you get started younger, you actually benefit more than you might if you started later. When you are young, like we started at 19 years old, brother. Now we're at 30 years already. And all of our children are grown and almost out the house. We got one more left. That's not quite yet, but we do have him left. He's left to do in our house. But I can tell you that when you start with that, that 30 year old, when you got to deal with all of their false concepts about what marriage is, what marriage is not. A lot of us are functioning off of false information about marriage. And what we've seen, a lot of us have come from broken homes. If you function off of that, if you function off what you've seen, you have to know that you're going to have to start something brand new for your marriage. You can be 20 and have a successful marriage. You can be 25 and have a successful marriage. You can be 30 and 35 and 40. You have to learn that you have to have something. The thing that's helped me in Sicilia is we are in the nation of Islam. And that has been our success all of these years. We have been trying to be Muslim, you can't have a marriage if you don't have no moral underpinning. The moral underpinning for us was being in the nation. That's right. I don't, I don't know why, how you can be successful if you don't have no, no teacher, if you are not connected to a teacher, a teaching of any kind that's okay. making you to improve your life. I don't know how you can do it. And, and see, okay. and he said the, the key word is we are repeating generational things. My mother was single. My father was a player. I saw this dysfunction. I saw domestic violence. I saw molestation. I saw rape. I saw we are so scarred with relationship oh, yes. residue right. that right. we function off of that. And so if my function is I don't trust men, I don't trust women, I saw this happen and that happen, and I personally experienced things. That's why we tell our single brothers and sisters, and Sister Ava said it best to our single brothers and sisters, our sister Dr. Ava in the Nation of Islam, where she said, you are at the optimum place right now because you right. are by yourself. yourself. 
Work on yourself. Work on healing yourself. No need to take your train load of baggage with you. No longer do you need to uh, keep the attached cargoes to your track anymore. Take them off. Work on healing. Work on repairing. That was my mother. That was my auntie situation. I'm claiming that's not going to be mine. We had right. to claim at 19. We were the first Muslims in our families to get registered at 19. Yes, my fam most of my family were Jehovah's Witnesses. So mm -hmm. just imagine me, the Muslim, and they all <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses, you know? Right. And so it's different things that we deal with, but it's being strong to know that when you are doing right, God is going to bless you and tell yourself, I'm not going to repeat that baggage, but I'm going to look at marriage as what it's supposed to be. Each that, of us is building our own dynasty, well, your own kingdom of God, husband, wife, children. And well, from there, they go into the society and make a tremendous strides because you've read them properly. Well, that's an excellent note to close on. Uh, brother Marcus and Sister Cecilia, it was wonderful again. In our closing minute, please tell the people about the 12th annual yes. marriage retreat, how they can yes. register again, please. <laughs> All right, the website is very simple. Please write this down. It's www.themarriagekeepers with an S, marriagekeepers.com. It's www themarriagekeepers.com if you have questions about the marriage retreat, if you have anything, if you need counseling right now, we uh, do counseling as well you can set it up for, for yourself online okay. at uh, two, 770 uh, 256-8856 770-256-8856 uh, we you. I'm certainly well, very honored to be on your show, Brian. Well, thank you, thank so you all so very much. And thank you and our viewing audience. And I encourage you to visit us at Crow, www.crow.org. Thank you for viewing. I leave you with the greetings of peace and paradise, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum.